13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. All right, that ought to do it. Take it out of the typewriter. Now address an envelope to Box 13, care of Star Times. <laughs> you know, this Box 13 is made for us. The letter was typewritten. There was no signature. And it read, Enclosed is an invitation to the Garden Charity Bazaar at the Arthur Mannering Estate this coming Thursday. Use it, and maybe you'll get adventure. Anyway, take a chance. And wear a red carnation in your lapel. That was all. Four lines. But, brother, what was in between the lines that I couldn't read then? And now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, Dan and the Wonderful Lamp. could you find at a charity bazaar, Mr. Holliday? That, Susie, is why the letter interests me. Sounds dull. Mm. Some of the dullest letters I get through box 13 have led to some of the biggest headaches. Mm. But fun. It was probably written by some huckster. A what? Huckster. Uh -huh. That's what I thought you said. I did. I know you did. Was it wrong? Could it be right? A huckster is a person who plays jokes. Oh, could you have meant hoaxer? You know what I meant. Takes a little while, but I get there. And I think I'll go to the charity bazaar. So, the next day I went to the charity bazaar. The Mannering estate was huge. And why not? Arthur Mannering had $5,000 for every blade of grass in the place. And it was a big lawn. There were lots of people, lots of money, and lots of places to spend it. I wandered through wondering what the gimmick was. Why I'd been asked what the adventure was going to be. No one paid any attention to me. No one paid any attention to anyone. Then, after about a half hour of aimless meandering, I just happened to stick my hand in my jacket pocket and pulled out a note. It read, Go to booth number five. Guess the number of beans in the jar as 1,862. Hmm. That was all. Somebody had put that note in my pocket. He's to do in that crowd. Well, the adventure that looked as though it wouldn't amount to anything was amounting to a jar of beans. Hello there. Oh, hello. This is booth number five, isn't it? That's right. Do you want to make a guess? Yes, I think so. It's five dollars a guess. Make as many as you want. Oh, five dollars a guess? <laughs> it's for a good cause. And if I guess right... I win the beans. When it's all over, we'd be glad to give them to you. But you also win a prize. <laughs> all right, what do I do? Here's a slip of paper. Just write your guess on it with your name. Uh-huh. Now, let's see. Does 1,862 sound like a good number to you? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, excuse me. I've got another customer. I wrote down the number with my name. Then I took a look at the others behind the booth counter. No one seemed very interested in me, and then... Are you all finished? Oh, yes, Thanks. Do you take the slip now? That's right, and thank you. Oh, don't mention it. Oh, by the way, when do we find out the lucky number? Oh, in about half an hour. <laughs> okay, I can hardly wait. I waited another half hour, and during that time, I paid $27.50 for a nickel fan, a nickel ice cream cone, and a three-cent brass ring I won at the fish pond. Then... Attention, Attention, please. We wish to announce the winner of the bean guessing contest. The winner is uh, Mr. Dan Holliday. Mr. Dan Holliday, will Mr. Holliday please come to booth five and pick up his prize? Thank you. Well, I went and picked up my prize. Whatever I'd won, it was big and heavy, all neatly done up in fancy paper and big ribbons. So I'd come to a charity bazaar to win a prize for guessing the number of beans in a jar. <laughs> a great adventure. Anyway, I took my prize package to my office instead of home. Oh, Mr. Holliday. 
Do your back, girlie. Uh-huh. Thought I'd drop in here on the way home. What have you got there? Mm, I don't know, but I want it. How? I guess there were 1,862 beans in the jar. Oh, that's mm. a funny number to guess. I'll ride with you on that one. Well, let's see what I've got. Okay. Mm, gee, it's heavy. Mm-hmm. What's that? It's a lamp. No self-respecting lamp ever looked like that. <laughs> it's horrible, but cute. So for this, I spent $32.25, all expenses included. The shade's kind of pretty. If you like oddities, yes. Hmm. It's not bad. Oh? Well, it's yours. Mine? Uh-huh. I don't want it. But maybe you were supposed to win it. Susie, I spent a dull afternoon and I came back with that. <laughs> Somebody's ribbing me. Oh, I bet that's it. <laughs> if I know whom to suspect, I'd send that lamp to him. Did you mean it when you said I could have it? Yes, I did. Susie, with my compliments, the ugliest lamp in the world. Now... I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, help me put it back in the box, will you? Uh, that'd take a half hour. Take it home like that. Well, I don't know about walking along the street with it. Oh, I see what you mean. But it's your problem. Oh, uh, throw the box away outside, will you, Mr. Holliday? It's, it's too big for the wastebasket, and there's a trash barrel right down the street. Oh, sure. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. You know, it's not bad once you get used to it. Yeah, well, that takes a while. So out I walked with the box under my arm. I threw the box in the back seat of my car, intending to get rid of it later, but I forgot and drove home with it. In fact, I carried it inside my apartment building, and when I reached my floor, threw the box down the incinerator chute in the hallway, and I wished now the lamp had been in it. It was midnight before I decided to get some sleep, and I was just dozing off when... Who's that? Special delivery letter for you, Mr. Holliday. Oh, okay, just a second. Sorry to get you up, Mr. Holliday. Oh, that's all right. Here's your letter. Sign here, please. Yeah, sure. Oh, sorry. I dropped the pencil. Here it is. I'll get it. Roll inside. Go back to sleep, <coughs> Mr. Holliday. I woke up with the night clerk bending over me. You all right, Mr. Holliday? Mm-hmm. What happened? Well, I don't know. I was checking a room and came by and saw you lying here in your doorway. You're sure you're all right. Do you want a doctor, sir? Uh, no, no thanks. Here, I'll help you out. Dizzy? Mm. I've been steadier on my feet before. I... Hey, somebody went through your apartment. Yeah, from the looks of it, with a steam shovel. Burglars? Yeah. I'm going to call the police. No, wait, wait a minute. Close the door. But, but the police, Mr. Holliday. Well, let's see if anything's missing. Yes, sir. Uh, well, there's your money. And, and your watch over on the night table next to the bed. Mm-hmm. And that's all that's worth stealing in here. Well, that's funny. Is it? Sure. You sure there's nothing missing, Mr. Holliday? No, not a thing. Well, gee, I... Look, it's all right of you. Better get back downstairs. I'll call the police later. Sure. Well, maybe you'll find something missing after a while. Maybe. Thanks. I'll see you later. Susie, this is Holiday. At this hour? What time is it? Almost one. Oh, oh, am I supposed to be at the office? Did I oversleep? Oh, but it's still dark outside. Just I... listen, Susie. Have you got that lamp? Lamp? Lamp. The one I gave you. Oh, sure. I've got it. Do you miss it? Look, lock your door. Don't let anybody in until I get there. You, you're coming here? Right away. Oh, but, but I'm not dressed. You'll have 20 minutes to fix that. But remember what I said. Let no one in but me. Susie, your guess is as good as mine. And mine's wild. But it looks good. Did anyone see you take it out of the office? No, I don't think so. Uh, and they thought I had it because I carried the empty box home. What's all the fuss about that lamp? I don't know. I... I wonder. What do you wonder? Have you got a screwdriver? Screwdriver? A uh, screwdriver and knife. Anything we can use to take that lamp apart. Oh, sure. Take it apart? Uh-huh. I think I've got a screwdriver someplace. 
I, I remember using one to fix my wristwatch. Oh, good. Let's have it. Is this one? Mm, that's good enough. Now, let's turn off the lamp and disconnect it. Gee, I don't understand all this, but it's fun. Yeah, there's a knot on my head that says you're wrong. Well, Susie watched. I took that lamp apart piece by piece, bit by bit. I even examined the shade, but... It's, it's just a lamp, Mr. Holliday. Yeah. Nothing inside the base, nothing in the sockets, nothing in the body. Nothing, period. Did you expect to find something? I was sent to that bazaar to get this lamp. I did. You ended up with it. But somebody thought so much of it that my head was tapped. Now, why? Maybe. Gee, maybe. Maybe, maybe what, Susie? Maybe it's the lamp itself they wanted. Susie, maybe you've got something there. But why? What's there about this lamp? I don't know. Look, the Mannerings are wealthy. Now, it stands to reason they've got a lot of valuable objects in their home. And the lamp could be worth a lot of money. We'll find out tomorrow. You're going to leave it here? I have to, Susie. Meanwhile, don't let anyone in. Tomorrow, we'll see what's so wonderful about this lamp. Susie kept the lamp. I went home and thought about it. The more I did, the less I did. Then the next morning, I picked up the lamp from Susie, took it to a dealer. Yes, sir. Can I help you, sir? Maybe. This, uh, this lamp. I want your opinion on it. Mm. Why? What's it worth? How much would you give for it? Mm, well, if I were in a good humor, two dollars. Two? Mm, two and a quarter. But I'd have to be hysterical. You're sure? <laughs> Positive. Uh, how much did you pay for it? Uh, nothing. Yeah, that's fair enough. Please, take another look at it. <clears throat> Must I? As a favor. Oh, all right. Well, I'd say it was the product of a factory that turns out about two million a year. It's nothing but plaster Paris and cheap common glaze. And the brass base and standard well, bring about 50 cents. Wiring's fairly good. And well, that's it, enough. You've convinced me. <laughs> I hope you didn't think it was an antique, sir. No, just a lamp. Exactly. Uh, do you want to sell it? No. No, thank you. Thanks for your trouble. Well, no trouble at all. Uh, come in again, sir. Uh, without the lamp. <laughs> I was about to leave the store when I saw someone across the street. And if my eyes were good, and they are, it was the fake who got me up at midnight only to put me back to sleep. He had followed me, and he was watching the store. He couldn't see me, so I turned back to the dealer. Yes, sir. Something else, sir? Do you want to buy this lamp? <clears throat> why? I want to get rid of it. Well, that's an admirable ambition, but uh, why to me? It's yours at any price you want to pay. When I said two dollars, that was a guess, you know. <laughs> In fact, I, I don't want the lamp. Oh, would you take it if I gave it to you? I beg your pardon? The lamp is yours. I don't want it. Well, this is very peculiar. Look, you pay me what you want. But take the lamp, huh? A dollar and a half. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I do these things. Uh, neither do I. Well, there's your money. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And good luck. Yeah, with that lamp, I'll need it. I can use the wire and the socket, though. I left the store. I paid no attention to the man who loitered across the street. I walked to my car, got in, and drove up the street and around the corner. Then I got out. I peeked around the corner and saw my man go into the shop. A minute later, he came out with a lamp, got in his car, and drove away. I hurried back to the shop. Good morning, sir. Oh, you again. The lamp. Yeah, what about it? You sold it. Yes. Hey, don't tell me you want it back. Did you know the man who bought it? <laughs> Mister, anyone who buys a lamp like that, I don't ask questions. It's his. For how much? Ten dollars. Oh, that was a quick profit. Oh, I didn't set the price. He came in, looked around, saw the lamp, said ten dollars for it. <laughs> I recovered my sanity and sold it to him. <laughs> and no questions asked? None. Why? Mister, you don't know it. But there are a million questions that could be asked, and I don't know one answer. Yet. And now back to Dan and the Wonderful Lamp, another Box 13 adventure starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Oh, there it was. A lamp worth two dollars, a hit over the head, and a big, big puzzle. That same afternoon, I bought all the papers, took them to the office, and looked through them to see if there was a report of anything stolen from the mattering place. <laughs> Nothing. I left the office and was on my way down the street when 
Uh, hello, Mr. Holliday. Huh? Oh. Keep right on walking, Mr. Holliday. Mm. Got another special delivery letter for me? An even better one this time. It all depends on you. From the song of the same name. I'm not amused. Let's go for a ride, huh? On a nice day like this? Let's walk. Save your energy. You'll need it. I see what you mean. Nice gun you got there. Yeah, nice car, too. It's right down the street. How handy. Yes. You got the lamp I take me to. Because you go with it. Hmm? Going to wire me for electricity? That could be. All right, get in. Okay, Max. You know where to go. Well, Max is smarter than I am at the moment. Uh huh. But you'll get smarter. But I've got a hunch you'll get much smarter before I've finished. Right, Mr. Holliday, sit down. Oh, thanks. Nice room. Could use a little furniture. This far out in the country? Yeah, we don't need it. Besides, Max needs room uh, to move around, understand? I'm looking at Max? Yes. He is big and rough. Doesn't he speak? I do the talking and I'll start now. Holliday, you're smart, but you're not smart enough. Now, where is it? Where's what? Don't stall. I don't know what you're talking about. You picked up the lamp at the bazaar. At your invitation. That's huh? right. How did you know the number of beans that would be in that jar? That doesn't matter. What does matter is I want to know what you did with it. The lamp? Not the lamp. And I don't know what you're talking about. One more chance, Holiday. Where is it? I said I don't know what you're talking about. Look, uh, you want a cut in it? Uh, cut? In what? The diamond. Holiday. You hear me? I don't know anything about it. Where did you take that lamp last night? It wasn't in your apartment. Where'd you take it? Go ahead, Max. Max came toward me. He got bigger and bigger as he did. He moved slowly, and while he did, I had to think. If I told that Susie had the lamp, they'd go to her, and I didn't like to think about that. Poor little Susie wouldn't know what they were talking about. And it seemed that things happened to people who didn't know what was what. I had to keep quiet. Max got to me and... Well, how are you feeling? Oh. Better? Had an accident, eh? Huh? Where am I? I guess that's what everyone says in a case like this. Found you lying in the road here, mister. Had a pretty bad accident from the look of you. I don't like to think about that. Can you get me back to the city? The hospital'd be better. Never mind, I can still breathe, I think. I want to get back into the city. Guess I can take you. Good, I want to go to the Arthur Mannering Estate. And quick. The farmer drove me into the city and to the Mannering Estate. I had a hard time convincing the butler I had to see Mannering, but finally... This is a fantastic story, Mr. Holliday. Yes, I'll agree, but the man who had me beaten said something about your diamond. Yes, the Mannering Blue. Where is it? Here, in the house. You're sure? Well, of course. Would you like to convince yourself? I'd like nothing better. Very well. But um, how about you? Don't you think we'd better see about your condition? It'll keep, I hope. Now the diamond. <clears throat> Very well, this way. Uh, it's impossible that anyone could have taken it. There were a lot of people here yesterday. <laughs> and an army of detectives, Mr. Holliday. No, I repeat, it would have been impossible for anyone to take the Mannering Blue from this safe. You're sure? Eh? Just a second, you can look for yourself. Hmm. That's it, huh? That's the Mannering Blue, sir. And this is the only time. That's right, Mr. Holliday. Then I give up. It's very curious, sir. This business of your guessing the exact number of beans in that jar and then... Wait a minute. Who knew the number of beans that would be in that jar? <laughs> Why, the one who put them in, obviously. A girl? Attractive, about 23 or 4? Oh, I don't know about that, but... Wait a moment. You're not suspecting Carol Marshall, are you? Was she the one in the booth? Yes, but I, I'm sure she didn't know. Why, as a matter of fact, she took the place of my secretary at the last moment. Secretary? Where is she? Uh, he. Uh, why, he, yesterday morning he asked to be excused. 
The bean guessing contest was his idea. And the secretary? Big, tall, yes. low, quiet voice? Yes, yes, that's scary. But the diamond's here. Is it? Well, of course. Maybe, maybe it's not the Mannering Blue. Substitute? Why not? For secretary who gets himself excused yesterday morning. Hasn't shown up yet. No. Here's a paste diamond made up. But the problem is to get the real one out of here. He bided his time. The bazaar yesterday was a perfect setup. The real Mannering Blue is hidden in that lamp I won as a prize. You see, he and his confederates didn't want to take any chances. Your secretary didn't want to take the diamond off the estate himself. A million things could go wrong. But, uh, but the real diamond, it wasn't in that lamp, you say? It had to be, but where I... I took it apart, I... Eh? What were you about to say? Look, you get in touch with the police. Here's my card. Keep in touch with me, too. Yeah, but Mr. Holliday, I... I've got work to do. Think hard. You brought the lamp home here. Yes. What did you do then? I put it on the table where you saw it. Did anything fall out of it? No, Mr. Holliday. Think, Susie. Think. The diamond had to be in that lamp. You took it apart, Mr. Holliday. There wasn't anything in it. But there had to be. Or I wouldn't have taken the beating I did. Now, think, Susie. Think. Gee, I, I am. I brought it home, put it on the table, connected it, and turned it on. And that's all? Sure. I, I remember because one of the bulbs wouldn't burn. One of the bulbs? Yes. I changed it because it was burned out. What did you do with the bulb? Threw it away. Why? Susie, ten to one, the diamond was in that bulb. But how could anyone get a diamond in a bulb? Don't you see? Take off the screw base. Take out the filament. Cement a diamond inside. Susie, Susie, where did you throw that bulb? Oh, in the wastebasket, right there. But, but it's empty. Sure. The cleaning woman always empties it in the morning. Where does she empty it? The trash barrel's downstairs, I guess. Holy mackerel, a $50,000 diamond and a trash barrel. Come on. You say you emptied the stuff in the barrels? That's right. All the stuff I empty in them barrels. And then what happens? Well, the stuff's taken away. They uh, come and got it this morning. <laughs> Okay, Susie. I've got to trace the rubbish truck to the city dump. You stay here in the office. If the police call, tell them where I am and tell them to hurry because I've got a hunch I'll be followed. Well, it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Except this was a diamond in a trash pile. And at the city dump... It ain't gonna be easy, mister. But the trucks that come in this morning dumped over there. Everything in the truck is dumped here, huh? Yeah. You're lucky we ain't started burning yet. Come on over here. This where you figure it might be? It's got to be. Morning trucks here, afternoon trucks over the other side. I'm looking for a light globe, a bulb. Will you help me? Sure. What are you looking for the bulb for? Yeah, you won't believe this, but it's worth $50,000. Are you... 50? What are we waiting for? Here's a bulb. Break it. Here's nothing but a bulb. Wait a minute. Here's another one. Nothing. Uh, come on, let's look for some more. We plowed through everything in that pile of rubbish. Knee deep in trash, we dug and dug. Until a half hour and a hundred light bulbs later. Hey, look. Here's another one. Let me have it. Thanks. Holy mackerel, look at that. Yeah, I see what you mean. Now, let's get out of here. Hold it, Holiday! Come on, fast. Ain't they shooting at us? That's a general idea. Where can we get undercover? Uh, there's an old dump truck there. It's come left. on, come on, let's go. Duck down here. The metal sides of the truck will protect us. Phew. Hey, mister, I thought this was a quiet job when I took Holiday, it. Holiday, come out of there! No dice. The police will be here in a minute. And you've got less time to live than you thought! He's coming this way. Hey, you got a gun? No, I never touch a thing. Stop. Keep down. Holiday, one more chance. Throw that diamond out. Them's police here. sirens. Throw it out, Holiday. We're going to hold out as long as you can. Longer. Well, I guess that does it. 
Scratch one secretary with a little too much ambition. Mixed up in it, too, wasn't I, Mr. Holiday? Mm. Susie, you don't know how close it was. <laughs> Something funny. <laughs> I just thought of a gag. All right. I'll sit through it. Go ahead. Well, uh, remember the story about Aladdin and the wonderful lamp and the Jimmy? Jimmy? But what about it? All he had to do was to rub it to get out of trouble. But you couldn't. Yes? Where's the gag? Well, you couldn't. And that's the rub. <laughs> Don't you get it? I got it, but I don't know what to do with it. Good night, Susie. Next week, same time, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville, with this week's adventure written by Theodore Henling. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. The part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker, and production is supervised by Vern Carstensen. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd in his latest Paramount picture.